Think of Facebook's size. Three billion users, annual revenue of $70 billion, all built on targeted ads and with one man in charge. I don't think that any one individual or any company should be making so many decisions uh, about important values for society like free expression and, and safety. But is Facebook losing control? Can it manage misinformation and hate speech? Facebook's certainly under pressure. It's facing an advertiser boycott that's growing by the day. It was started by the campaign Stop Hate for Profit. It lists the content it wants gone from Facebook and Instagram too. This includes white supremacy, anti-Semitism and vaccine misinformation. And the message resonated. All of these companies have now joined the boycott. Lego, for example, says it wants to contribute to a positive, inclusive digital environment. The language is more stark from clothing company Patagonia. Their business model's flawed and they failed to take the steps needed to remedy it. So I think now more than ever, they're endangering human health and weakening our democratic systems. And concerns about content on Facebook are global, from Islamophobia in Australia and New Zealand, to ethnic tensions in India, to mistruths from Donald Trump. Of course, Facebook has its defense. The man behind Mark Zuckerberg here is Nick Clegg. It's VP of Global Affairs and Communications. In an open letter, he says Facebook does not profit from hate. He goes on to say that of more than 100 billion posts every day, a tiny fraction are hateful. Though, of course, even a fraction of 100 billion is still a lot. Facebook also highlights its policy targeting content from dangerous individuals and organizations, a new campaign offering advice on misinformation, and a new oversight board which will review content, though hasn't yet. And we're told Facebook has gone from identifying a quarter of the hateful content it removes to 88% of it. Its critics, though, say this isn't enough. And three issues cut to the heart of this. The first is Facebook's scale. Nick Clegg argues rooting out the hate is like looking for a needle in a haystack. We can't eliminate all hate speech, he says. And on one level, he's right. The volume of content is vast and ever expanding. Any system would struggle to monitor it all. But this isn't all or nothing. This is about reducing the content and making it harder to find. Which leads us to the next issue of which content is targeted. Who decides what's truthful and what's hateful? This is Mark Zuckerberg talking to the BBC. I think you want to generally allow as wide of an aperture of, of expression as, as possible across the internet. He's also said he doesn't want Facebook to be an arbiter of truth. But this ad boycott is asking all tech platforms to be arbiters. And they're reaching different conclusions. Twitter labelled a Donald Trump tweet as glorifying violence. The streaming service Twitch has suspended the Trump campaign because of hateful conduct. That refers to a 2015 Trump speech in which he accuses Mexico of sending rapists to America. Facebook, for its part, says it has zero tolerance of hateful posts, but it hasn't removed anything by the president. Matters of truth and hate are sometimes clear, often they're not. It's a judgment, and that tension around what stays and what goes will not be easily resolved. So we've looked at scale, at defining truth and hate, next the issue of responsibility. Does Facebook simply reflect reality? Facebook's response to this boycott has restated two of its long-standing beliefs. One, that the vast majority of conversations on its platforms are positive. And two, this. When there's hate in the world, there will also be hate on Facebook. Facebook believes it's a force for good, that it's motivated by making the world better, that it reflects society. Not so, argues US media veteran Walter Isaacson. He says Facebook does not just reflect society's hatred and resentments, it amplifies them, intentionally, for profit. They're smart enough to fix this if they want it, he says. They're also smart enough to know Facebook's share price, as it's navigated several huge controversies. Facebook does feel pressure, but extraordinary success means it's not easily bumped off course by boycotts or anything else. And I'll finish with one important distinction. No doubt, people are proving highly susceptible to misinformation and hate speech on the internet. But Facebook isn't the internet. It's a business with online products. And within its domain, it sets the rules. Mark Zuckerberg still controls these platforms. He has plenty of options and some choices to make.